Okay, in this episode, we're going to continue looking at structure of the atom um, subtopic from the light and atoms topic, and we're going to look at absorption spectrum and the concept of fluorescence. This should be a fairly short one and hopefully a fairly straightforward one. Let's get into it. Okay, so we've learnt about emission spectrum and the idea that with an emission spectrum that um, when a, a hot gas or vapour of an element or an excited gas or vapour for that matter because we could use an electrical discharge um, is excited, it will release um, light with frequencies or wavelengths corresponding to the energy level gaps between the, the energy levels in that atom. So hopefully you're, you're familiar with that now. Now absorption spectrum is a little bit the opposite. If you've done chemistry, you've probably also already seen absorption spectrum in the context, context of atomic absorption spectroscopy. But if not, don't stress. So what happens is if we take, well, let's read what's here. When light with a continuous spectrum is incident on the gas of an element, discrete frequencies of light are absorbed, resulting in a line emission spectrum. So if we take the continuous spectrum, white light with all the colours, we shine it through the gas or the vapour of a, an element that's not excited, because otherwise if it's excited, we'll see the emission spectrum. Um, and then we look at the spectrum of that, what we will see is a little bit like the continuous spectrum with all the colours, but there will be these narrow bands missing. Now these narrow bands that are missing, the frequencies of the absorption lines, these are these dark bands, are a subset of the line emission spectrum in the same element. So if we look at hydrogen here, here's our emission spectrum for hydrogen. If we excite the gas or vapour, here is the absorption spectrum if we shine white light through that vapour. And essentially what can happen here is that where the energy of the light corresponds to an energy level gap, that light will be absorbed by the atom. If that light is absorbed, then it's removed from the spectrum. It no longer exists in that spectrum. Um, and we see that dark band on the spectrum. Again, I talked about this in the last video, but... Um, we can use this energy level diagram here. The atom can only absorb light if it corresponds to one of these transitions between a lower energy and a higher energy state. So it's a bit like these are the steps on the ladder. It can only absorb the light if it corresponds to a step on this ladder. It can't absorb light that only corresponds to, you know, part of the way between one of these steps in the ladder. So we only see light of frequency and therefore wavelength absorbed that corresponds to those energy level gaps. So hopefully you should be able to describe the line absorption of spectrum, sorry, describe the line absorption spectrum of the atom, for example, hydrogen. So it's a continuous spectrum with narrow um, absorption lines corresponding to the emission lines in the emission spectrum, what I've talked about up here. On an energy level diagram, draw, tra draw transitions corresponding to the line absorption spectrum of hydrogen. So the line absorption spectrum of hydrogen is um, basically, well, any of these lines where it's in a low energy state and it gets excited into a higher energy state would be an absorption line. Now, in particular, if you remember in the last video, we talked about and this will become relevant for the next point, these lines that come from the ground state are the in the UV part of the spectrum, so they're not the ones that we're seeing here because we're looking at the visible part of the spectrum in this diagram here. The ones that are in the visible part of the spectrum are the ones that come from the first excited state, or this N equals 2. So this transition here that I've just drawn would correspond to that line there because um, as wavelength increases, frequency decreases, so this one would have the lowest energy, then the, the next line that just below 500 nanometers would be corresponding most likely to that absorption there. So that atom being going from the N equals two state to the N equals four and so on up until these levels. And as you can see on this spectrum, 
these energies are going to get closer and closer together as we get up here these bands get closer and closer together also as we get up towards that region um, i'm not going to do the calculation but you could do the calculation what would a one point i forget i think we worked that out in the last episode but you could work out what wavelength that would correspond to and then you could basically match it up on the spectrum there by converting the frequency and the wavelength so they are the absorption lines at least for the visible but there are other absorption lines from the ground state which would be in the uv and then from the n equals three state which would be in the infrared part of the spectrum now the next thing we need to know, and it relates to what I was talking, explain why there are no absorption lines in the visible region for hydrogen at room temperature. Well, at room temperature, when we're dealing with the absorption spectrum, we're dealing with a cold gas up here. So there would be no atoms in the first excited state. So you're only going to get absorption lines from this first excited state if there's enough energy to push the atom into this first excited state. At room temperature, there's just not sufficient energy to put the atom into the first excited state so then it can absorb from there up into the higher levels. So as I just said at room temperature oh sorry the absorption lines from the ground state for hydrogen are in the UV region these absorptions from here at room temperature there's not sufficient energy to excite hydrogen into the first excited state the N equals two state so if there's no hydrogen atoms in this N equals 2 state, you're not going to see absorptions occurring from this. So at room temperature, you won't see those absorption lines in the visible region. Finally, account for the presence of absorption lines called Fraunhofer lines in the sun spectrum. So if we look at light from the sun, the sun is a very dense object. Um, it's white in colour, so it's basically releasing all of those colours. But the main elements that the sun is made of are hydrogen and helium and there will be hydrogen and helium in the atmosphere surrounding the sun and as that light comes out of the sun it'll have to pass through that hydrogen and helium and particularly with the hydrogen they will well, both they will absorb wavelengths of light that correspond to the energy level gaps in the hydrogen and also in helium so we will see those narrow dark bands those absorption lines on when we look at the spectrum of light coming from the sun. If we look at it with, you know, really um, very accurate, high precision equipment. So I've just noted that stuff that I just said down there. And um, now we will um, finish off this episode by looking at the concept of fluorescence. So fluorescence, and hopefully fluorescence, is one of the easier concepts that we will look at um, this year in physics. So what happens? When an atom absorbs high energy photons, is it is elevated to excited states, energy states above the ground state. So I think we're familiar with that now, but just to show here is our hydrogen atom. If we excite it by either shining... Um, high energy light or by using um, electrical discharge or by using heat it can go into that excited state excited states are generally short-lived and the atom quickly returns to its ground state often by emitting a series of lower energy photons the process of converting high energy photons into a larger number of low energy photons is called fluorescence so what that looks like is the blue is where it absorbs and then when it relaxes, it does this by a number of different steps, like such. So it releases one high energy photon, and then it relaxes, releasing three, eh? in this case, lower energy photons. Now those transitions don't have to coincide with exactly one energy level gap. It could also go like that, for example. So there's lots of different um, transitions to lower energy states we can get. Each of those will give us a different release of energy, therefore a different frequency, therefore a different wavelength of colour. Um, we um, also, you know, if you're familiar with something that glows in the dark or something is, which we say is luminescent, 
The idea of something that's luminescent is it has a very long-lasting excited state. And what it will do is gradually over time, it will slowly, the atoms will decay. And as they decay, they will release light um, and hence they will glow in the dark. So you, you expose it to the light, it puts all the atoms into their high excited state. Then once you have, um, you, you basically turn the light off, all those atoms are still in an excited state. Over time, they will slowly decay. As they decay, they will release light, and that is what why we will see something appearing to, to glow in the dark. So, I don't really think we need to write too much more, but let's just check we've covered um, all our important criteria here. So, the skills that you need to be able to demonstrate is draw on an energy level diagram of, for example, hydrogen, the production of multiple photons via fluorescence, that's this here in green. Analyze and explain the characteristic wavelengths, fluorescence and line spectrum for elements other than hydrogen using electron energy levels. So basically that just means if you're given an energy level diagram like this for another atom, you would need to be able to work out, oh, what are the possible energies of the transitions as it relaxes? If you can work out the energies, then you can use E equals HF. So you can use that to determine the frequency. And then if you can determine the frequency, you can use C equals F times lambda to work out the wavelength. Often you'll see those two formula combined and written as E equals HC on lambda. So that lets you go straight from knowing the energy of a transition to working out the wavelength that would be produced by that transition. So hopefully that is clear. So that now covers um, absorption spectrum and fluorescence. And in the next video, we will look at the concept of stimulated emission and then how that is basically applied um, to lasers and how lasers work. Thank you.